Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, another one of my all-time favorite rackets that I was able to find over in Japan. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so good morning to everybody out there. Uh, coffee sponsor of today is someone. Someone writes, thanks for your videos. Oh, thank you so much, someone. I appreciate you hooking me up with the morning brew. If you want to be my someone that takes care of my Java of the day, network is buy me a coffee dot com forward slash tennis spin thank you so so much to all the someones of the world as i always say mm. all right gotta love those someones all right so one of the one of the other rackets that i brought back from the thrift store in japan called the book off is the secret no, it's, it's called a secret, yes. It's, well, no, it's actually not called a secret. It's called a Proto, the Proto EX by Yamaha. In America, this would be called a secret EX. Whenever I mention this racket or describe this racket to anybody, everybody would always say, Gabriella Sabatini. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> we all know Gabriella Sabatini back in the day she used this racket they actually made a yellow version of this racket that was like a limited edition version so wherever you see white they had yellow in it they also made a 110 version of this racket too this is the more popular 100 they call it the proto ex in i think asia all of asia japan for sure um, they call this the Proto. I'm not sure why they didn't use the name Secret over there. Maybe they wanted to keep it a secret. I don't know. But if you know, let me know. Okay? Um, so I found this racket. It's a four and a quarter. That's pretty rare for, for... I guess it's not rare in Japan. It'd be pretty rare for here. And we restrung it, like I stripped it down, took the grips off. I strung it with what I would have strung it back in the day when I would have played with this. Um, it's just a Syngut 16 gauge, 55 pounds, yellow, because I liked yellow back in the day. And I stripped the grip down and actually no, I just put an overgrip on this one because it was actually perfect. Whoever had this racket before me um, had a nice, decent working grip on it still. So I just threw a uh, overgrip on it and uh, yeah, I'm pretty ready to try it right now. Uh, the thing I noticed about this particular Yamaha is that it's got a weird kind of a shape to it. It's not quite rectangular, it's not square for sure, but it's not quite round. So this flat part right here, that's usually pretty flat. If it was a head racket, it'd be longer. If it was like a Wilson, it'd be a little wider, but wider more in the bevels. It's got kind of an odd shape, as you can see. It's kind of like a, a wing nut, if you know what that is. You know, like one of those things that go like this. Um, because the... The main bevel is short and then the secondary bevels are longer. So it's got an interesting shape to the actual handle and the butt cap, which I never noticed before. Maybe they just started it in this racket, but this is supposed to be like the player's racket in the line. So not quite as stiff as let's say the 04, the 06. This is more like a secret 10, if you remember that type of racket. So more flexible, um, definitely not as stiff, okay? So this was when I was needing a little more control back about 30 years ago. And 
I absolutely loved this racket. This would kind of be like a modern day um, pure strike, let's say, or a blade type of a racket. But I, I never knew what weight these things were. So it's nice to know the numbers 30 years later, right? Oh, reset. So just an overgrip on a quarter, Sin gut 16 at 55. 348. So definitely heavier than rackets today. So a similar racket in spec and possible performance would be about 10 grams or maybe a little bit more lighter. So 348 is a is a pretty big number. Like you probably would not see that today. It'd be pretty rare. Let's check out the balance. About 312 there. Definitely head lighter. All right, let's swing weight this puppy up. All right, let's check out the swing weight. My guess is probably about 300. Three oh seven. Okay. All right. Let's analyze. All right. So that number is a bit high. There is an overgrip on it, though. That's pretty normal. That's just a hair high compared to what racket we would see today. So if we looked at these numbers compared to, let's say a blade or a strike, this would probably be 333. This would be 308. And this would be like 301. So yeah, <laughs> it, it, this is where rackets have kind of gone is that they've gotten lighter, they've gotten head lighter and, and the balance overall has gotten lighter in the head. So back when these rackets were popular, you know, weight was what people wanted towards the head to make it easier. But your, our swing was a little different also. Our swing was a little more through and not as up north, let's say. So I understand where these rackets were coming from. It was kind of the beginning of of you know, let's say windshield wiper or a or, or lot more top to, uh, to the sport of tennis. Uh, 100 square inch head, pretty innovative and new back in this day. Uh, these guys, I feel, were the first people who made graphite rackets in 100 square inch heads. Um, definitely on the control side, this one will be from what I remember, okay? So, Guys, it's time to try it. It's been 25 to 30 years since I've tried one of these. Um, super excited. All right, see you on the court. All right, so we just got off the court. Coach Chris is here with me. Have you tried a racket like that before? Have you seen a racket like that before? No. No? Mm -hmm. I think you were too young. It might have been about 30 years ago when this uh, came out, which means you were like two years old or one years old. So 
If you, you probably don't remember Gabriella Sabatini. Nope. Okay. Well, okay, well then. Yeah. <laughs> she was the face, kind of the face of this racket. Um, control spin, easy access to kind of controlled power. Mm. Um, I'm going to let you talk about what you think it feels like compared to modern day though. Okay, go for okay. it. Okay. When I picked it up immediately, I noticed that it did have some heft to it. And after swinging with it a bit more, it kind of reminded me of, yeah, Blade, but also Pierce Strike too as well. Um, you definitely do have to swing with this racket. Um, the weight distribution, definitely a little bit more on the handle. But it's cool to see that Sabatini. Sabatini played with a racket like this. It is definitely, and I didn't realize that uh, Yamaha also made a these pro these are this is like an actual racket like you can that you can play with not as much as that v12 uh o2 <laughs> racket there in terms of hitting it flat but this has kind of an overall player kind of pro racket feeling so it's got control it's got all all you need really so interesting yeah so th this is what um Coach Ching is talking about here. We were going back and forth um, with this racket and the Yamaha Proto O2, which is like super stiff. And this is pretty flexible, good for control. Mm -hmm. When he had that racket, uh, the O2, and I had this one, he was just easily blowing it past me. And he's like, come on, Ching. And I'm like, dude, you got the V12 engine and I'm shooting with a Honda Civic over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm actually having to swing to gain power. And he's literally just like easy going, you know, using my speed, my ball against me. And just like basically making my ball accelerate even twice as fast coming back to me. So I was like, man, and I'm just trying to just struggle to take a full swing because if I don't take a big, you know, I'll take a full cut with this racket, it's not going anywhere. I literally have to swing. This racket forces you to swing. But when you do, it's got great feel mm -hmm. and it rewards you. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of the rackets today, they don't give you as much feel as something like this. Even says it, the difference you can feel. Made in where? Singapore. Singapore! Made by the crazy rich Asians that got rich off this racket and is now retired and don't make rackets anymore. But they're making pianos, icicles, and other things. <laughs> Maybe they should go back into making rackets. I know, right? Can Yamaha please make rackets again? Please? I'll play with them. I know. A lot of people would. All right. Coach Ching, thank you so much. Where can they find you, bud? You can find me at CB Chen Tennis. And that's it. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Guys, if you see one over there at the book off in Japan, pick it up for 10 bucks, guys. Oh, I got you, Rob, buddy. Look, I got you, Rob. Oh, man. I got you, Rob. I got you, Rob. Thank you for, thank you for the weekly lesson, dude. Oh, I got you, Rob. I got you, Rob. I got you, Rob. Now, if you want a patient pro just like Coach Rob, hey, play your court is the place. The, your pro can come to you, right? They can come out to your site. All you need to do is go to playercourt.com. You can even get a discount there. Playercourt.com forward slash tennis spin. Harry, are you sure you're right-handed?